4.2.7, predicting the shapes of simple Lewis structures and their bond angles. Let's start off with methane, CH4. Carbon is in group 4, and so I'll put 4 valence electrons around the outside. Hydrogen is in group 1, and I'll put 1 for each of those. Now since we're doing VSEPR theory, we'll join up those single electrons to make pairs. In three dimensions, it'll be a tetrahedral shape, and that'll be 109 and a half degrees. The other tetrahedral of the IBN cis you know is NH4+. Continuing in this theme, uh, ammonia is NH3, and that has a lone pair of electrons and three bonded pairs. And so this will be a trigonal-based pyramid. And the lone pair that I just circled, well, they're extra repulsive. So they're going to push the legs of the pyramid slightly closer together. So it won't be 109, but it'll be 107 degrees. Uh, another example of that is H3O+. Plus. That's also a trigonal-based pyramid. Another way to do a Lewis structure is to add up the valence electrons, 1 and 1 and 6. For water, gives you 8. Divide that by 2, that gives me 4 electron pairs. Then I draw out the uh, atoms as needed and make sure I've satisfied the octet and the duet rule. So water has 2 lone pairs. Both of those are extra repulsive. And so they force the legs of the water molecule together. The shape is a dog's leg, or bent, and this new compressed angle is 105 degrees. The previous ones were four charge centers. Let's look at three charge centers. The most common one is boron trihydride. Boron's in group three, so put three valence electrons. Hydrogen group one, one each. Now you'll notice that boron's weird. It has a stable sextet. It's stable with six electrons. And so there's three charge centers. That gives you trigonal planar, 120 degrees. Ethene also has three charge centers on each carbon gives you 120 degrees. A slightly trickier one is sulfur dioxide, six and six and six electrons. Valence gives you 18 divided by two, that's nine pairs. So you have to put the S and the two O's together. Nine lines are allowed, fixing the octet rule. Those two oxygens are pushed down by this lone pair here, giving you a bent structure to kind of look like this shape. Oops, I forgot the two lone pairs on the oxygen. Not to worry. So those were three charge centers. Let's look at two, two charge centers. Classic example is carbon dioxide. I'll draw that out. That is a linear molecule. Two charge centers, 180 degrees. Ethine, again, two charge centers around each carbon. Okay, let's have a little bit of fun. We're into the world of half-life. There's a tetrahedron here. The neon lights represent the bonded pairs. This could be methane or the ammonium ion. Let's throw off a melon, and now that could be ammonia. At the top, there's that lone pair, so the bond angle would be reduced from 109.5 down to now 107. Throwing off another melon, this could now be water, a bent or dog's leg shape. There's a lone pair here, extra repulsive, a lone pair there, extra repulsive. 105 degrees. Running along to our three charge center model, this could be boron trihydride. The central tire is boron, and there's two, four, six electrons around the outside. Boron stable with six. 120 degrees. Let's run along past the higher level stuff. Jump up here to a linear molecule, carbon dioxide. You can see the flashing blue are the electrons. That's the carbon in the middle. The baseball bats are the bonds. He doesn't look very happy about it, though. Let's go for a swim. 